Hello everyone, I am Eric from Invensys Learning. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Scrum and Kanban are the two most popular Agile frameworks today. But, which one of them is a better fit for your team? In this session, we will discuss the difference between Kanban and Scrum, their advantages, downsides, and situations in which to use them. Hi Ryan, I have heard that you have worked in both Kanban and Scrum teams. Would you please let us know how your experience was in both of these teams? You know, like what was different? Which one you liked better? And how well did it work for your team and the project you were working on? Hi Eric. Yes, I have experience working in the Scrum as well as Kanban teams. Though the underlying principles are the same, these two frameworks have several important differences that you should know about. Let us follow this agenda to figure out how Scrum and Kanban are different, shall we? We will begin by discussing what exactly Agile software development is. Then, we will talk about how the Scrum framework works. Similarly, we will learn how Kanban works. After that, we will discuss the key difference between Kanban and Scrum, and situations in which to use them. Finally, we will conclude this session by summarizing what we have learned about Scrum and Kanban. Sounds good right? While you are here, please do subscribe to the Invensys Learning YouTube channel to stay updated with trending technologies, and view more content on other interesting topics. So, to kick things off, let us start with what exactly is Agile Software Development. Agile software development is an umbrella term for a set of frameworks and practices that break down complex projects into small manageable goals. You are working towards these goals while adding new goals based on the requirements and customer feedback. One of the main benefits of this approach is the ability to adapt and change at any step depending on feedback, market conditions, corporate obstacles, etc., and to supply only relevant products to the market. That is why an agile approach is usually very flexible, quickly adapts to changes, iterates less while implementing faster, and is able to seize new opportunities as and when they appear. It enables a fast decision-making process through a flexible organizational structure and simple communication. There are a lot of frameworks that follow the Agile philosophy. The most popular ones are Scrum, Kanban, Extreme Programming, Crystal, Feature-Driven Development, and many others. While each of these has its own unique qualities, they all incorporate the principles of Agile when developing a product. Because Scrum and Kanban both fall under the Agile framework umbrella, many people confuse them or think they're the same thing, which is definitely not true. They do share a few common characteristics, after all, they are both Agile methodologies. So, you can expect them to have certain similarities. Let's see what those similarities are. First of all, both of these frameworks are based on so-called pull scheduling, which ensures that the quality product is delivered to the customer in the shortest possible time. Applying a pull system allows you to start new work only when there is customer demand for it. The main aim here is to build products based on actual demand and not on forecasts. By doing so, your company can focus on eliminating waste activities in the production process. Actually, there is quite a debate on if Scrum is a pull system or a push system. But that's a topic for another day. Moving on, both Scrum and Agile platforms tend to limit the work in progress. They put strict limits on the amount of work in progress at any given time. Limiting work in progress makes bottlenecks visible and improves throughput. Both Scrum and Kanban do that, it's just that, how they do it is different. You will know more about it when we discuss the working of these frameworks. They both allow for large and complex tasks to be broken down and completed efficiently, which puts them under the Agile umbrella. They place a high value on continual improvement, optimization of the work, and the process. They make sure that all the team members are in the loop on work in progress and what's to come. Before we begin discussing the differences between Scrum and Kanban, let's quickly go through the way Scrum and Kanban work. So, what is the history behind Scrum? In the year 1986, two management experts Hirotaka Takeuchi and Ikujiro Nonaka introduced the term Scrum. They published a study in the Harvard Business Review which explained that empirical evidence suggests that small cross-functional teams produce the best results. They borrowed the name Scrum from the game of rugby, to stress the importance of teamwork to deal with a complex problem. In 1993, Jeff Sutherland implemented the first Scrum project at the Easel Corporation. After that, software developers Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland each came up with their own version of Scrum, which they presented at a conference in Austin, Texas in 1995. I am sure you guys know what Scrum is, so, let us see how it works. In Scrum, you break down the phases of your project into smaller pieces that can be completed by a cross-functional team within a prescribed time period, called a sprint, most commonly two to four weeks long. Your main aim is to ship some valuable increment of work by the end of each sprint. Once the sprint begins, you aren't allowed to add any new requirements. 
The Scrum process starts with the product owner creating a product backlog and then prioritizing it, which is done by the product owner, after discussing with the development team. Then the product owner and development team attend the sprint planning meeting run by the Scrum Master. During sprint planning, the team pulls a small chunk from the top of product backlog items to work on during the sprint. That chunk becomes the sprint backlog. The set of tasks that the Scrum teams decide to deliver for that particular sprint. As the sprint progresses, the development team performs the work necessary to deliver the sprint backlog items. On a daily basis, the development team uses the daily Scrum meeting to assess its progress. The Scrum team uses a tool called a Scrum board. It is a visual representation of the workflow, which generally has four columns, namely to do and progress, test, and done. Different colored posts are placed in each column indicating the progress of individual development items or user stories. So, the tasks move from to do, to build, then to test, and then finally to done. At the end of each sprint, the development team delivers a functioning piece of the product to show for their work. By that I mean all the tasks on the to-do list would have moved to the done list. The development team holds a sprint review to demonstrate what they have accomplished during the sprint to stakeholders. After the sprint review, the team gathers for a sprint retrospective, to discuss what went right, or wrong, and areas for improvements for further sprints. Scrum teams follow an inspect and adapt approach. This means they improve continuously, taking lessons from their previous sprints. In a nutshell, that's how Scrum works. Now, let us explore how Kanban works. Kanban is a highly visual way of executing Agile. Its origin dates back to the 1940s. A Toyota engineer, named Taiji Ono, created a system that used paper cards for signaling and tracking demand in his factory, naming the new system Kanban. Taiichi noticed the way marketplaces are being restocked. They have just enough supply to meet the demand. If there are empty shelves in the shop, then more inventory is ordered to meet the demand again. He then applied this just-in-time principle to the Toyota facilities to ramp up the car development process. In 2004, David J. Anderson was the first to apply Kanban to IT, software development. Since then, the Kanban methodology has gained quite a noticeable popularity. Kanban focuses on maintaining a continuous task flow and continuous delivery. At the same time, the team is never given more work than it can handle. This is accomplished through the two primary principles of Kanban, visualize your work and limit the work in progress, WIP. Here's how these principles are applied. Principle 1, visualize your work. First, you collect the work required for a project and document it on the cards. The cards are then placed on the Kanban board. The Kanban board is split into categories of work to be done, work in progress, and completed work, and teams can add more categories as necessary to better visualize their process. Each task is recorded on a Kanban card, as each card is addressed, it moves to the next phase until it's moved completely through the workflow. This is how the entire team sees the status of the work being done. Understanding and observing the current flow of work will help you visualize how tasks are progressing through the workflow. Kanban focuses on maintaining a continuous task flow and continuous delivery. At the same time, the team is never given more work than it can handle. This is accomplished through the two primary principles of Kanban, visualize your work and limit the work in progress, WIP. Here's how these principles are applied. Principle 1, visualize your work. First, you collect the work required for a project and document it on the cards. The cards are then placed on the Kanban board. The Kanban board is split into categories of work to be done, work in progress, and completed work, and teams can add more categories as necessary to better visualize their process. Each task is recorded on a Kanban card, as each card is addressed, it moves to the next phase until it's moved completely through the workflow. This is how the entire team sees the status of the work being done. Understanding and observing the current flow of work will help you visualize how tasks are progressing through the workflow. So, that's how Scrum and Kanban work. I am sure that, from the discussion we had till now you have understood the fundamental differences between these two concepts frameworks, right? Definitely Ryan. So, from what I understood, Scrum is more structured, allows for forecasting emphasizes teamwork, accountability, and iterative progress toward a well-defined goal. On the other hand, Kanban is a bit more flexible, and it is a visual system for managing work as it moves through a continuous process. Is that right? Yes. That's right. So, now you know how they implement a poll system that we talked about in the beginning in two totally different ways. Now, let us dig a little deeper and see the key differences between these two frameworks. Sprint versus Flow As you already know, in Scrum we have sprints. The sprint is a time box of one month or less, 
during which the team produces a potentially shippable product increment. Sprints have consistent durations throughout a development cycle, and a new sprint starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint. Scrum teams follow an inspect and adapt approach. This means they improve continuously, taking lessons from their previous sprints. Whereas in Kanban, there are no required time boxes or iterations. While the Kanban method is iterative in nature, what we have is a continuous delivery flow system and work in progress limits to achieve the higher speed, better focus, and productivity. The lack of a structured framework found in Kanban can lead to poorer productivity. Roles and Responsibilities Scrum has a set of mandatory roles that you must implement. The product owner, Scrum master, and team members. Each role has its own set of responsibilities, and they must work together to achieve an orderly and efficient balance. Who manages the Scrum team? Well, nobody. Scrum teams are self-organizing and everyone is equal, despite having different responsibilities. The team members should also be very skilled and held accountable. If there's a lack of accountability, the team will fall behind seriously as there is no management involved. Under Kanban, no set roles are prescribed. Although there might still be an agile coach. Unlike Scrum, there is no single Kanban master who keeps everything running smoothly. The entire team is encouraged to collaborate and chip in when anyone becomes overwhelmed. Again, if a team member is unclear about their role and the work is unattended, it will cause a domino effect on other team members. Commitment. In the Scrum framework, the team commits to a specific amount of work for each iteration. Commitments are made based on previous sprints. So, if the team does not anticipate its capacity accurately, or unexpected problems arise, the sprint fails. In Kanban, the commitment is based on capacity. Work in progress limits prevent team members from working on multiple tasks. Everybody commits to finishing what they have started before engaging in new work. They only take up new work items if it's within their VIP limit. Planning. With a Scrum framework, planning happens iteratively at the beginning of each sprint. It helps set clear and specific targets that the Scrum team should complete during the sprint. It also brings everybody on the same page. With Kanban, there's close to zero planning involved. It includes just-in-time planning, instead of planning for a bigger time period. Just-in-time is a system of supplying goods as close as possible to when they are actually needed. Kanban teams often plan based on past workflow data. It includes work types, size, classes of service, and various other factors. Workload. As we discussed in the beginning, both Scrum and Kanban limit work in progress. It's just that how they do is different. Scrum limits work in progress per iteration. The development team has to commit to the number of tasks that they are ready to accomplish during the sprint. For example, if the development team wants to complete all items in the in-progress section simultaneously, Nothing prevents them from doing so. Kanban on the other hand is a little different. Teams assign a limit to the number of cards in any active work columns. When the limit is met, no new work can enter the column until a task is completed and moved to the next column. For example, number 3 in the pink box means that there shouldn't be more than 3 items in the in-progress column. Modifications or changes. Once the execution of the scrum sprint begins, you aren't allowed to add any new requirements. Changes during the sprint are strongly discouraged. For a sprint everything is planned, when more tasks are added to the sprint, scope creep happens. It will mess up the workflow, can deprioritize your tasks, and also cause you to miss deadlines. Kanban is a very flexible framework. A Kanban workflow can change at any time. You can insert or add tasks constantly to the backlog and existing cards can get blocked or removed altogether based on prioritization. When you are adding new tasks, work in progress limits should be kept in mind. Also, if the team capacity changes, the work-in-progress limit can be recalibrated and work items adjusted accordingly. It encourages modifications and promotes continuous adjustments. Key performance indicators. Scrum measures productivity using a metric called velocity, which is the number of story points completed in a sprint. It guides future sprint commitments, or how much work the Scrum team can take on in the future sprints. If the team completes an average of 40 story points per sprint, velocity equals 40, it won't agree to a sprint backlog that contains 55 points. To keep a check on them, usually, Scrum teams implement a couple of charts such as, burndown chart and velocity chart. Lead time and cycle time are important metrics for Kanban teams. They are used to calculate the average amount of time that it takes for a task to move from start to finish. Your goal is to reduce the values of each metric. Improving cycle times indicates the success of Kanban teams. The cumulative flow diagram, CFD is another analytical tool used by Kanban teams to understand the number of work items in each state. 
The flow diagram will show you how stable your flow is and help you understand where you need to focus on making your process more predictable. Scrum Board versus Kanban Board Visual management boards are used in both Kanban and Scrum. However, there are some fundamental differences between them. On a Scrum Board, the columns are labeled to show the workflow states. At the beginning of the sprint, all the stories are added to the board. The goal is to get everything done by the end of the sprint. If all the stories are not present in the final column by the end of the sprint, it means that the sprint was unsuccessful. After the sprint retrospective, the board is reset for the next sprint. Kanban board also has the columns labeled to show the workflow states. The main difference between the scrum board and Kanban board is that, Kanban board has VIP limits visualized on it. For each status column, there is a work in progress limit. The maximum number of work items under that column cannot exceed this number. Kanban has no timeframes. So, it is not necessary to reset the Kanban board and start over. The flow continues for as long as the project continues, and the new items, or cards, are added as soon as the need arises. Application Scrum is ideal for projects where you want to move fast but you need some degree of planning and coordination. It is suitable for goal-driven projects with fixed deliverables. You know, where the priorities may not change as much over time. Scrum is also suitable for non-mature teams, or when you're new to Agile because it follows strict guidelines and rules. It is a very popular framework among software development teams. It can also be applied to other industries, such as advertising, construction, and event planning. On the other hand, Kanban is the best choice when you have a lot of incoming tasks with changing priorities. It is better suitable for mature teams. Because, when you are familiar with the organization's culture and have already developed reliable working habits, you wouldn't need to adhere to as rigid rules and guidelines as novices need. Teams involved in industries such as marketing, software development, or content creation can benefit from Kanban. So, Eric, these are the key differences between Scrum and Kanban. That was a great comparison. Let me just summarize what we discussed till now. Scrum is a more structured approach with defined roles and rituals that guide the development process. Kanban is a more flexible approach that allows the team to continuously work on new features and adapt to the ever-changing requirements. The table that you can see on the screen summarizes the difference between Scrum and Kanban. Please go through it. Scrum and Kanban, both come with a broad scope of unique features, so it is up to you to choose the most suitable option. Scrum and Kanban can be used together. In fact, the Scrum and framework has emerged. It merges the structure and predictable routines of Scrum with Kanban's flexibility to make teams more agile, efficient, and productive. Scrumban was initially created as a way to transition from Scrum to Kanban. By extracting the best of both frameworks, Scrumban teams are more flexible in their ability to adapt to changes as they arise. The bottom line is to do what works for your business and your customers. If it means combining the features of both Scrum and Kanban, then go for it. So, has this spiked your interest? Are you planning to be a Scrum Master? We can help. At Invensys Learning, we provide Scrum Alliance accredited certified Scrum Master training worldwide. Enroll now and take the next step in your pursuit to Master Agile. For more updates on trending technologies subscribe to Invensys Learning YouTube channel. Also, if you have any queries, share them with us in the comments section.